Uh, a warm welcome to a pod full of saints episode seven for the 2022-23 season we're recording it in the afternoon of uh, tuesday 30th of august uh, a day before jake's birthday by the way lee i don't know if you brought him a card yet no not at all no no i wouldn't bother either um right we'll skip over that uh, we've got two matches to look back on uh well, and, and four points as we're sawing up the table. Uh, but I better introduce the other ones as well. Uh, birthday boy tomorrow is Jay Kellicott. Hello, Dave. Hello, everyone. Hope you're all well. We'll keep your age uh, quiet, Jake, obviously. 27. <laughs> and uh, and the other one is Lee Wood. 27 what? <laughs> one doesn't like to ask. <laughs> I mean, that's a rough paper round, mate. I, I don't know whether you've got a sort of chase for the streets of St Albans as a kid, buddy. But good Lord. Anyway. Thank you. Happy right, birthday well, for tomorrow, well. Jacob. Thank you. Yes, happy birthday, Jacob. That's what we meant to say. <laughs> um, right, we're going to look back on these two games. Uh, I don't think there's much point you two looking back on yesterday at the state you were in, but we'll start with Saturday. Nil-nil uh, uh, home to Taunton Town. First time they've been to Clarence Park, and uh, well, I'll be quite happy if we don't see them again down there for a long time as well. They came here solely with the intention of getting one point, and it didn't make for a great game. We didn't have... Uh, with your ability to break them down, and we got totally frustrated, I felt. Um, did it look anything like that from behind the goal? Uh, exactly the same, I thought. Um, I, I almost totally forgot that we played that game, to be honest. It was so forgetful, really. Um, nothing much happened, apart from the Sean Jeffers free kick that wasn't allowed, obviously. Um, but, yeah, we struggled, didn't we, in the final third again? Um, the good thing is, as you say, defensively, we looked fine. Um, but going forward, I think coming away from that game on Saturday evening had definitely some real concerns about the lack of creativity and ability to break teams down at all. And I think that was the thoughts of a lot of Saints fans. Um, so, yeah, a real concern that because when you've got a striker like Sean Jeffers, you've got to get the ball to him to give him a chance to score. Yeah, we're creating that, that game in particular and a few others beforehand. We're creating nothing for him. Mm. Um, so it's very difficult for him to uh, show what a player he can be. Again, the midfield going to get criticised, isn't it? Because of a lack of creativity there, just going across the pitch, uh, back to a defence. That's not going to win you many points. No, no, not at all. And I think on the same day, didn't Johnny Goddard score two for Slough Town? I think he scored, and then again on Monday. Um, I think, I think we're really lacking someone like like Goddard. We talked about it in the summer, though, didn't we? We mentioned it then. It didn't really get directly addressed, I don't think. And I think we're suffering going forward. I think we do have to move on, though, fellas, because the fact is, Banton missed a glorious opportunity to put mm. us ahead as well. We okay. open goal. There's just this huge reluctance to shoot. And, you know, call me old-fashioned, boys, but if you don't shoot, you're not going to score too many goals either way, no matter how much creativity you have in the middle of the park. What I would say, Dave, you've hit it on the head, mate. They came here for a point. And they won't be the first team to do that. So we're going to have to learn. Um, but what I would say, positives out of this, you know, defensively, that was our that was our Achilles heel this time last year, and they seem to set themselves a little tiny bit, but just frustrations again and again, and we've got to learn to break these sides down, and that's only going to come with time and oh yes, quality players. They've had three away games this season now, Taunton. Still haven't scored a goal. It's not hard to see why. They did have one excellent chance, actually, just after the uh, Jeffers free kick, which we're going to come on to in a second. And the guy volleyed it over the bar from close in. It, it looked mm. easier just to stroke it in. Right, that free kick. Um, <laughs> the goal was disallowed. Uh, yeah. Sean Jeffers scored direct from it. Do you know what? Looking at the uh, highlights, and highlights are ridiculous. A load of stuff just shouldn't be on there. I think all those highlights is beyond me, but that's by the by. Um, Dan Ball's tackle on Sean, for which he was booked, it does look as though he actually got the ball and didn't didn't play Sean at all. But anyway, we got the free kick. And um, talk us through what happened next, whichever one of you wants to do it. Well, apparently, you're not allowed to run in front of the wall within, is it one metre, two yards, I think? Um, which is a new one on us. Um, and yeah, very much surprising. Um, I think the assistant flagged it straight away. And no, he play, didn't. Did he not? It's not, well, it's not true. It was uh, a referee's decision, 100%. But fair play to the assist, well, the officials, you know, technically by the letter of the law, got it right. Although I've not that I've ever seen it applied at any level of football ever before. You look at the video, and I've got photos from the side as well. 
Oh, he's pretty much close on a metre away from him. I, I think in English that's a yard now, isn't it? Um, and oh, it was such a harsh decision. I mean, I'll go. I'll take you back further. The idiot at FIFA who came up with this idea and these other idiots around him who said, yeah, this is a great idea. This will stop goals being scored. We don't want people coming to games and being entertained. Let's adopt it. You wait for adopt it. All the individual <laughs> FAs adopt it. What sort of people are running our game? So you're not a fan then, Tabs, no? We're run by idiots, Lee. We know that. <laughs> We're say that Mr. Tavener's uh, uh, ideas are not reflective of either Mr. Ellicott well, or myself. Well, I was going to say when but, when when Dave goes missing next week and uh, FIFA say <laughs> they've got nothing to do with it. Yeah. <laughs> but, uh, a lot of goals don't necessarily mean it's been a good game. But when you get a great goal like that, a great mm. strike, perfectly placed free kick, and the keeper went for it hundred percent, and he was banging the ground in annoyance, but he'd let it in. He got beaten by it. He didn't realise there'd been some sort of offence. And I'm sure Taunton didn't realise until the referee pointed and said, well, I'm just allowing that. And technically, he might have been right, but what a stupid rule. No, the, rule. The, the, the best thing was the keeper turned round and looked at us all and sort of went, why, why is that being ruled out? <laughs> so, you know, and uh, yeah, I don't think anyone at Clarence Park realised, not even the announcers, because we played the goal music for what, quite a while afterwards. Um, but yeah, as you say, real disappointing, great strike, you know. Finally, it looks like we've got someone on set pieces and direct free kicks that can actually hit the target um, in Shaw. And he didn't do that well with them last season, but impressive rate target. already. Um, the target. But yeah, as we said, you know, it's a shame to have that ruled out. But yeah, what, we've got to love football, haven't you? You mentioned what's allegedly called music there, Jake, was played when the ball went in the net. There was some racket come over speakers. Um and, and it went on for ages, didn't it? And Johnny announced it, probably the best goal announcement he's ever made. He wasn't watching what was going on. And it takes you back to um, the Arsenal friendly. We had a goal disallowed in that game as well for offside. And again, the music went off and everything. Oh, for goodness sake, get rid of it. It's just making the club look silly when you get situations like this. <laughs> Some would say, mate, they sort of do it just to cheese you off. Yeah, yeah. I think it, it's exceeding, Lee. Yeah, yeah. Hi, Johnny, by the way. Yeah. Hope you enjoy. Their work here is done. <laughs> yeah. Their work here is done. <laughs> <laughs> oh dear me. Um, so a point against Taunton at home, good point or a bad point? I think, well, it's just a point, isn't it? Yeah, it's just a point. It's not. Yeah. It's neither good or it's just a point. I think. Move on. I think the concern, <laughs> the concern probably would be from it though is the lack of home goals and the lack of any real entertainment at home games at the minute to try and get get fans back through the gates through the turnstiles, and it's it's not been a spectacular start, has it? I tell you what, mate. That's very interesting. I bumped into a couple of city fans. There was a um, a charity run on Sunday, and I bumped into a couple of city fans at the end of the run, and they said to me, "They've got no problem at all with the price rise. They've got no problem at all with the badge and all that sort of stuff that's come before. Their massive problem why they're not visiting now on a, on a frequent basis is the performances. It's just the performances. They don't want to watch." the dirge that has been offered up to them on a regular basis towards the latter end of last season. And they said it was one game after another, after another, after another. And in the end, it wears them down. And they think, fine, they go to, yeah, they go to Clarence Park to see their friends, have a good time, watch some football. But ultimately, what was being dished up wasn't to their taste. And you have to say, they probably weren't the only ones. No, I, I think they've made a very good point there, Lee. We, we haven't scored in the first three home league games this season, which is the first time that's happened in our history. We haven't scored in six of our last eight home games. Um, it's a pretty dismal record. Um, but yes, a lot of people are unhappy with the badge as well still, by the way. <laughs> Get that dig in. Oh, Dave's really on fire today. We need to start anyway, recording. This is what in we had back in 82, 83. This is what we had. Did you paint on with... Is that on with Byron? Did you do that yourself? Yeah, might, might as well have been, mightn't it? <laughs> <laughs> oh dear. Right, so we'll put that game to bed and move on to uh, Bank Holiday Monday, Tunbridge Angels. Uh, you two took the train. Uh, I drove there. And, well, it was a battle, wasn't it? Ian said we dug in mm. in his post-match interview. And I, and I think that's a fair description of what it was. We, whether we deserved the points or not is another thing, but we certainly dug in. I mean, I've seen us play better and, and lose games mm. of football. 
I don't, I mean, we had some really nice spells. We, we played some excellent stuff, especially the first half. Um, one thing I would say is that you cannot fault the desire. And they've now got, a, I think the team have become a bit more solid now, you know, and they've got that. And even when they were under the cosh a little bit, they've got that perfect release ball, the one-two touch, and then it, it gets out wide really, really quickly and it eases pressure. It doesn't always happen, but when it does happen, it's a great outlet to have. Um, defensively, even when, uh, even when we had to sort of make the changes early doors, I don't think it affected the balance of the play, which I think is what Ian really wants. Now. He wants to have that balance that people can come in, seamlessly slot into any position across that back there and still influence the game. Um, Dave, you are right, mate. Do we deserve to win that game? Absolutely not. Um, but, I think we were, but I think we were good value. We worked hard, which is what, which is what I want to see in the team as much as anything else, mate. Credit will go to um, to Andrew Stanley. We'll come on to him in a minute. But I think somebody who uh, really saves us a few, certainly twice in the first half, maybe once in the second as well, Michael Johnson made some excellent mm. saves. He did. And, uh, he did. They, they did have a few chances, Tunbridge, but uh, he was excellent. And I, I thought defensively we did well, but they did have those chances and he was there to save us. Yeah, I think the defence and the goalkeeper, I think they've really sort of stepped up, haven't they? It feels like, well, maybe not goalkeeper. Johnson was excellent for a lot of last season. But the defence as a whole unit feels it's really taken a step up over the summer. Um, and the first few games, we discussed this, Lee, haven't we? You know, defensively, we look good. Now it's the other end, the end of the pitch. We need to start scoring goals because that defence, you could build a winning team on at the minute. I think losing Callum Adebayi was a shame. Mm. And I think that definitely, I think we saw that the impact of that on the Tombridge goal. I think Ian even referenced that in his post-match. Um, but hopefully that's not too bad. Another one for the injury list. Um, but overall defence, really good. All of all four of the back four couldn't sort of slate any of them. And I thought, again, Tafari Moore, I know Devante Stanley will obviously get the plaudits so we'll talk about. But again, Tafari Moore at left-back doing a very good job. Mm. Yeah. Um, <laughs> it's some of man of match, man of match awards that appeared on Twitter this season and been a bit... Curious, and uh, Ches Isaac got it yesterday, presumably for his goal, because the two best players on the pitch, you mentioned them there, Jake, Durante Stanley and Tafari Moore, they are really playing well at the moment. Absolutely. I mean, at times, they're probably our most attacking players, aren't they, in terms of going forward? They both look excellent, but they're both doing great jobs defensively. And how good was it to see Devonte Stanley score that goal? It's, it, you know, Hollywood script for him to get it. Absolutely amazing. If you're unaware, it's a year to a day on the same ground where he broke a leg. I think he laid on the pitch for about an hour, didn't he, while we wait for that ambulance. Mm. Um, and then a year later, a good four months ahead of schedule from what he was saying after the game yesterday, when it's expected to come back, he was playing and he scored that goal. And uh, <laughs> as you say, it couldn't be scripted better. No, and I think he enjoyed it. <laughs> The bloke is an absolute machine. I mean, even afterwards, Jake and I were, were down towards the tunnel, sort of applauding all of the lads off. And you can see that he had the, he had the biggest smile in the entire stadium. He loved it. The players knew that they'd, they'd sort of dug in. And you know what? Yes, they were aching and they were hurting and they've got bumps and knocks. But they, they earned those three points yesterday through pure endeavour, if nothing else has. It's funny, Ches Isaac, as we said, got man of a match there. Uh, probably on the back of a goal. Uh, and he did what we've been calling for for weeks and weeks. He had a <laughs> shot from outside the box. So, golly, you mentioned You pays your money. Then. That's what happens. You pay, yeah, you, mate, you pays your money. You know what I mean? And what a finish, though. Good Lord. I mean, it, t it almost seemed like a f age to sort of nestle in the back of the net. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, we've given him a little bit of flack over the last few weeks. Um, or I have certainly because I just don't feel he's imposed himself on the side as, as much as what he should have done um, and I don't feel he did anything particularly wrong yesterday either but the fact is he's not going to set the league alight but when you come up with just little little flashes like that um, he, he very rarely gives the ball away uh, which is you know is, 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 is a fantastic thing to have in your side um, one thing I will say is that he needs to be a bit more uh, engaging with with the forward play. You know, he needs to he, he needs to be that 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 pivotal link, um, mm. which is, which is what I referred to earlier on about that release ball. 
everything's got to go through him and then he pings it out wide and then we can get us going in the right direction again. But on the whole, Tabs, I mean, you know, it was a, it was a good day. Jake and I drank half of Kent um, and we celebrated by drinking the other half on the way out. So um, it was a good day. The boys played really well, actually, and effort was top, top notch. I agree with you about his Isaac. Lee, except one thing about you say he doesn't give a ball away. I think he does give it away cheaply, and that's the problem. His forward okay. pass to the attack, it, it goes astray far mm. too often, and so we quickly lose possession. Uh, he's, he's all right going across the pitch and whatnot. Uh, he, he's obviously not another David Noble. It's, I mean, people try and compare him as such. He's barking up the wrong tree completely. But he's, he's got to hit the forward men in front of him more often. Mm. Um, it, it seems too often to be hit and hope. Um, but you know, maybe yesterday give him a bit of confidence, give a whole team confidence, that result. Absolutely. I think you saw at the celebrations at the end there, didn't you, with the mm. players and the fans? I think really how much it meant and how important it was to pick up a tough win on the road. Tombridge and A-Mugs, good side. Jay Saunders, good manager. They may not have had a decent couple of recent results, but they're very difficult to beat. I think we saw that. And the Saints really weathered that 20-minute period of the second half, didn't they, where it was you know almost all hands to the deck defensively-wise. Survived it and went on and did it. And great result. Um, only annoyance is Joe Neal not scoring at the end. Oh, Joe, come on, come on, let's get that goal <clears throat> finally, please. But, um, yeah, really great result. And as we said earlier, we just need to start putting in these performances and results at Clarence Park. I think now you mentioned Joe there, uh, Lee, 22 games now since he joined us and no goals. He's got to start chipping in. Um, he, no one's going to fault his work rate, right? it's terrific. But he's got to get some goals because there's no two ways about it. Sean Jeffers is out of form at the moment. He got a couple of goals at Chesham, but he's not looking the player at all. But mainly, as you mentioned earlier, Lee, it's because we're not creating the right chances for him. Mm. And it seems to affect him mentally. The confidence isn't there, is it? Or oh, I don't think it is. Yeah, but the setup of the team is different to last year. Um, he's very much finding himself isolated on his own up front. And that is always a thankless task. He holds the ball rel- relatively well, but he does need that support, and he's got to bide some time. Is he the might? Is is he the right man for that role? I don't know because if he's holding the ball up and holding off defenders, you want him running towards goal. You want him mm. running on the last shoulder and running towards the defenders. But look, he's still got some goals this season. Um, Joe Neal. I mean, he was brought into the side to score goals and he's not doing that. I don't know how much grace you give him. If if we had a... If our injury list wasn't so long, I don't reckon he gets in the side as much. Um, but again, it's all about effort though, isn't it? It's about effort and work rate and he's got abundance of that. It just really, really, really nice when sort of chipping with a few goals now. Will things help Sean Jeffers when Mitchell Weiss is fit? Yeah, yes, but we spoke to Mitch at the end, didn't we, briefly, Lee? after the game and he didn't seem particularly confident of being fit anytime soon <laughs> I think he said he's got a scan isn't he later this week so goodness knows how long he's going to be Manash Sundir again probably brought in over the summer as quite a creative player legs in midfield he's not even in the squad at the minute with that injury is he it's it's struggling and I don't know if there's anyone really to come in and do that job alongside Sean or behind Sean. It's Sean, it's got it difficult at the minute. He hasn't got players necessarily around him. Only positive is, and it's something that didn't happen last season, other players are stepping up and scoring, thankfully, at the minute. Um, but yeah, difficult. I don't know. I don't know what the answer is to Sean Jeffers. Oh, last year, in. last year we lose that game. Yeah. Undoubtedly. Yeah. No, you are you um, are right. But I think the way we're set up now, we've always harping on again about this. We're harder to beat. Yes, we're not scoring goals, but we're not letting as many in either. So let's count our blessings for that. We don't deserve the three points, but we've got them anyway. So we'll take it. First time we've seen uh, Tunbridge's plastic pitch. Uh, they play two games on it now. Um, the fan both. Uh, not really, um, but they played all right, didn't it? Yeah, it was it was fine, wasn't it? I didn't think it really had much of an impact on the game. It's just typical sort of. 3G surface, and it's probably one of the better ones we've played on recently, especially when they knew when they go down pretty new, they're often a bit of a not great, so it was all right. And I suppose you know, main thing is I know Callum got up and knock, but you know, most of the lads made it through, didn't they? That's the main thing without additional injuries. Just hopefully, Callum isn't too bad. 
We still would experience their man just standing by the touchline, looking on. Uh, Steve King, most recently with Dartford. Uh, do we read anything into that, or is he just watching the game on a bank holiday afternoon? I think probably I'd read into it in terms of Tombridge. I would, you know. Um, Jay Saunders only just started. He's only asked what five uh, games or so. Yeah, I know, I know. But we know what Kingy's like. He'll be, he'll be ego games every week. Denise just puts his name out there, waiting for a job. I think. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, as well, though, I think Jay, Jay Saunders is uh, putting some money into the club as well. Mm. I heard, I, I read somewhere, so I can't I can't see him getting the heave out anytime soon. He was going to keep, you know, secondly, sort of funding the squad as well. So, uh, but again, it's all about performances there. And they're quite a, they're quite, a, you know, a, a strong crowd there, aren't they? You know, they, they demand success. Mm. They're quite an expectant crowd. Um, but how many times? I mean, how how long that lasts if they keep losing games is um, interesting one. Yeah, I did uh, did also want to mention uh, the referees' performance yesterday. Here we go. We had some question marks, didn't we, about Italy? I think at least right. His name was Aaron Farmer from Colchester, and he sent Tom Bender off at Concord last season. Sorry, Jay. I think at least maybe two potential penalty decisions that maybe could have gone the Saints' way. But his reluctance to get his card out of his pocket um, throughout the game was absolutely astonishing. Yeah. I mean, it's, I think he pretty much left him back in Colchester, didn't he? I don't know what he was doing all game. <laughs> I mean, the it first was funny, one on Jeffers, wasn't it? You know, in the first half and then Banton in the second half. Just the, the, amazing. Especially the one on Banton at the end, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and he just, he just seems to clatter him. Um, but, yeah, not the greatest refereeing performance, but thankfully it didn't impact upon the result. No. Um, so I was just going to try and quickly look up his uh, record against us, but... Uh... Probably not the time to do that now. Um, we've had him, what, one, two, three, four times? Oh, one win, two draws, one defeat. Oh, well. Consistency. <laughs> <laughs> but, yeah. yeah. Oh, well. But I know that you had a, a had an excellent view of the penalty shout day from the 80 yards away from the side of the ground, the <laughs> other side of the ground. You criticised us at half-time. Um because your eyesight, mate, isn't the best, is it? So, you know, but I, I, I dare say you've got an absolutely fantastic opinion on both of those. Um, a second one, no, I haven't, because I lost it in the camera. The players locked it out. The first one, I, I thought Sean, I thought he'd actually missed the ball when the defender caught him. Um, I don't know, need to look at it again later, probably. Um, I was... Yeah, I mean, I, I was sort of chatting to a couple of Tunbridge fans behind the goal shortly after that happened. And they said he got caught, but he, they, he might have sort of knocked the ball on a little bit and he would never have got the ball anyway. But, I mean, it's, as Jake said, it didn't cost us the game, thankfully. But the referee, very, very dubious um, decisions over the course of the afternoon. Hmm. Right, and uh, we sort of touched on there, another injury for us, Callum Adebayo in the first 15 mm. minutes. Joy McKenna came on and formed a good partnership with Clarkie in the middle of it. Yeah, I thought Joy... But we still got done, of course, fair goal. We've seen it so many times. Cross comes in, tall bloke yeah. knocks it in. Yeah, and Ian did reference that in his post-match, saying, you know, if Callum's there, probably don't concede that. So I think that's definitely something to work on. But yeah, I mean, you know, Joy's got his critics, but I thought him and Clarkey looked all right. All right. And I think probably Clark is probably a bit of an un unsung hero from yesterday, isn't he? Pretty anonymous, but mm. that's because he did the job he wanted to do as a centre-half clear the ball, win your headers, um, did a very good job. As we know, Clarkey always will do for us. He's a consistent player. Um, but yeah, I think it was important that we didn't fall apart. And thankfully, if Joy has to start on Saturday against Worthing, I think, you know, Ian will have faith in him to do so. It's, it's funny, isn't it? We're now in the top 10 in 10th place. Uh, one defeat all season, unbeaten in the last four. But it doesn't feel like it, does it? Because football is not flowing. At the moment, it's it's not really entertaining, um, but we are sort of grinding out the odd result, which is keeping us just on the edge. And it's it you know on reflection, it's that grinding out we didn't do last season, was it? After Christmas, every game we failed to find a way to win them pretty much all the time. Um, so it feels like Ian's built a different team this year, a team that might not entertain a lot, but it might get up a pick up a lot of scrappy points you know, that might do well. But then also, like we said earlier, teams are coming to play us and not exactly expressing good football either, are they? So I think, you know, like the Taunton, 
Um, but it's getting results. And as you say, suddenly nine points on the board. We'll take that. I think it's the very best that we can have hoped for, given the injuries, the way we play the game now. Mm. I don't think Ian's going to be concerned at all, other than the injuries. Uh, we're looking for this first goal at home of the season. I think you touched on there. This coming Saturday, Worthing down the park. Their first visit here in National League South. We played them in the Ishmael League and the FA Cup. Uh, when they came in the FA Cup a few years ago, they brought quite a bit of support. Their average gate this season, I think, is already over 1,400. Um, so, it's a club that's doing well. They got held back by the COVID for a couple of seasons, but now they're up here. I say unbeaten. This is going to be a test of whether we really can get going at home, isn't it? I, th I think this is probably our toughest game so far on the pa on paper mm. anyway. Uh, Worthing, good team. They invested a lot in the summer. They've got a good squad. As you said, they'll have really good support there at Clarence Park on Saturday, I think. Got really good following. It's going to be difficult. And I think it's going to be a bit of a different challenge for us at home because looking at the fans' forum, a lot of their supporters were talking about how they they just want to play football. They want to get on the ground and play football and go at teams. So I don't think we're going to have necessarily the issues that we did against Taunton. But their fans are also talking about how they're struggling in midfield as well just mm. to get a footing because of how physical this league is. So it's going to be interesting how that battle goes. But, I mean, that's a lot of negativity from a team that are unbeaten, one of only four <laughs> unbeaten teams in the league. High standards for Worthing fans. So is that also, that's also they, because they beat Dartford. I mean, you know... Yeah. It, it takes a good side to go to Dartford and come away with, with a win. Yeah. So we're going to have to be on... I mean, I'm concerned that if we get any more injuries, we're going to be having to play you know, players out of position. And that's where we come unstuck last season because we just haven't got the depth or the quality to counterbalance that. Um, but that said, it's going to be a great game. Uh, two football, or two sides that want to play football. The pitch is going to be conducive to that. So that's going to be great. And hopefully we will see some goals, home goals, hopefully. Going into um, Monday's game at Tunbridge, uh, Ian Anderson had given Liam Soul three consecutive games. He was totally ineffective on Saturday and I felt Ian was right to drop him on Monday. And he brought in Chris Paul. I am afraid he didn't offer a lot more, did he, unfortunately? I, I didn't think that worked for me. Um... And I think the reluctance as well to sort of make the change as well, maybe bring Liam Soul on for the last 10 minutes just before the goal, maybe. But yeah, I mean, I'd, I'd, ch I'd probably put Liam back in for Saturday, probably, because I didn't see much from Chris Paul either. I don't know what the, I don't know what we're doing there at the minute or what we can do. Again, because the squad's the way it is, I'm not sure you can particularly change it up. Nobody was on the bench again, not used. I don't, don't think we'll be seeing him much, will we? <laughs> Is a novelty factor, though, isn't it? Because the fact is, let's let's be honest. If Vice is fit, Paul doesn't even get into into the side. Liam Liam Salt doesn't even start. Um, but the hindsight thing, Chris Paul, he's an enigma, isn't he? Because he he's come with a relatively high pedigree and he's and he's well respected. But I've not seen him really kick on yet, Tabs. Uh, and it's we need everyone to hit the ground running because the injuries we've got the teams we're having to face, the frequency of the games at the minute. So early on in the season, everyone's going to get tired and bumps and bruises. We need it. We can't be carrying anyone at this stage. Yeah, and it could be said at the moment, we are actually carrying a few in that yeah. team, but, we're, but they are grinding out the results. Yeah, and I, I think you mentioned, Lee, earlier, that sort of playing players out of position. I'm not really sure what Chris Paul's best position is. I thought, you know, central midfielder, wide player, central attacking midfielder, I don't really know. Um, so when you bring it in for Liam Sowell, I don't know if that's a natural like flight replacement. Um, so I think that's difficult, but it's a question mark that Ian's got going into Saturday um, and we'll see what he does. It's like Joe Neal as well, isn't it? Where is he actually playing at the moment? He's uh, almost got a free role at times. It is, it yes. It seems to almost be a free role just for Sean sometimes going out wide. But then we know he's a striker, so I don't, I don't know if that's where he should So we're be. confident then, boys, yes, going into Saturday? <laughs> Well, <laughs> players, players out of position. <laughs> Safari Moore started at right back at mm. Chelmsford, didn't he? Uh, since then, he's moved to left back. And oh my goodness, he is slotted in so well. See, that's another thing. When uh, Mackay Townsend West is fit again, uh, mm. Ian's got a decision to make there, hasn't he? But at the moment, you can't really see him dropping Safari. Right. I mean, I don't know. West, West comes straight in if he's fit for me because I, I think he's shown enough. I think he's shown enough. 
quality and composure. That horrific tackle, exceptional. But um, I think he comes in, and I think you find a place. You find a place for Tafari Moore. Um, if he's diverse as what we've been told that he has, that he is, then he comes in. Maybe you look at Isaacs. Maybe you look at the role. Maybe you push Banton a bit further on, and then you push West further up that line. Who knows? But just that what having that one quality player at your disposal who's going to come in gives you so much other options, doesn't it, to go forward? Um, but at, at the minute, Ian hasn't got that luxury. Interesting. I spoke to someone have... yesterday. Sorry, Dave. Um, and they suggested. They, su- joke. they suggested that um, Ian might look at putting more back at right back uh, when Mackay West comes in and pushing Devonte forward as a more attacking a player. So I don't know. His delivery is going to be fantastic as well. We know yeah. he's got that. So yeah, yeah. I mean, goodness knows what he was doing up in their box nine minutes <laughs> into the game yesterday. But good job he was. <laughs> It was right. Yeah, you talk, uh, before we do a prediction, actually, we get, we get back onto the uh, Lancashire brothers. Um, Alex now uh, settling in at Blackpool, we hope, and his brother Will, who was with Sheffield United last season, and news broke at the weekend. He's joined uh, Tottenham Hotspur, a million pound up front, seventeen years old, and another million depending on appearances and goodness knows what. That family's doing rather well this season, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> it's got anything to sort of do with a young Thomas Norman, maybe sort of putting in a good word for for <laughs> uh, the mighty Saints, perhaps. <laughs> Talented bunch, those uh, Lancashire's, aren't they? Certainly yeah. are. Yeah, so, fair They're play. Doing well, I, um, both of them were, were at Arsenal yet early on, weren't they? But you know, they've managed to overcome that. <laughs> I wanted to briefly mention well before we do predictions. There's quite a lot of discussion online the last day or so about. National League highlights, and especially the North and South. Dave, you won't have seen it, but Ryan Reynolds, one of the Kroners, Wrexham, has pretty much called out the National League for not being able to stream their games internationally and also not getting the highlights earlier. Um, And I saw a couple of comments from National League South sort of owners about it this week that, you know, game like yesterday, the clubs can't release it till, what, 10pm tonight? Fans aren't able to watch it till Wednesday. The game was bank holiday Monday at 3 o'clock. I think the 36-hour rule... I think it's a bit ridiculous, isn't it? Um, and it really restricts fans that can't go to games being able to watch their club. It, it is an absolute nonsense. The clubs have done all the work filming it and everything and they're paying for it and whatnot. And like the Saturday games, they, they're not allowed to put them online. I think it's till midnight Saturday, uh, Sunday when I was doing mm. it. And I can't imagine that's changed. It, it's, it's nonsense. It is. So Someone actually, I don't know who it was, but they, they posted the highlights of yesterday's game up a bit, a bit earlier. So I got a... I got a brief sort of a glimpse of that, which was fantastic. But in terms of what what Ryan Reynolds is proposing, I think he's getting a bit of I think he's getting a bit of he- like ahead of himself because yes, we've got to make this level accessible to everybody, but the, you know there's still broadcasting rights you need to uh, adhere to, and you know Ryan Reynolds, world famous movie star, but do you really want to be tuning into Wrexham against Solihull? Uh, you know, <laughs> is it? Is it is that the appeal that he's after? Um, I think there, there's a play, but what the one thing that I would pick up on is the BT Sport. They should really show a few more of the key games in mm. in the north and south because some of the some of the games that they've highlighted for from the national from the Van Armen national, shocking, <laughs> absolutely <laughs> shocking. It's, it's not a great advert for non league game. Uh, whereas you know the sides in the north in particular, some strong sides there and and in the south. They could be put on like the national platform, and you'd be surprised because there's some really good players in. Well, while we're putting the boot into the national league, their website atrocious. <laughs> so you've binned off FIFA, you've binned off UEFA, you've been binned off Ches Isaacs, and now you're starting on the national league. Anyone else? Is, no, Ches no Isaacs didn't completely. No, he's no he's, fair. Is no one safe from the from the wrath, the yellow pages of doom? They're going to be like an Argos catalogue this time by the end of the season, does. Well, if anybody agrees with you, uh, FIFA, about that law, then uh, they shouldn't be watching the game anyway. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, oh, dear me. Can you tell Dave's in a good mood? <laughs> well, he's in a good mood. I'm still hungover. Jake's looking forward to his birthday tomorrow. His 57th birthday. So it's all going remarkably well, Bruce. Do we have to predict for Worthing, then? 
on the prediction front, uh, Lee's got one right so far this season. And mm. Jake, you've got two outcomes right, but not the score right. So uh, get your act together. Right, here we go then. Worthing Saturday. Oh. <laughs> Optimistic then, mate, are we? T1 uh, Saints. I'm going to go one up. I'm going to go one up. Yeah. Neither of you have gone for a defeat yet this season. Um, because we, that's because we hardly ever lose, as we know. Well, that's because we're going up. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> if, look, we, the other thing we haven't mentioned, actually, about Saturday, because it's the first game after the holidays. Um, now, our gates at the moment are well down on, on last season. Uh, they're going to bring a few, which is going to help. Um, it's going to be interesting seeing that, isn't it? Yeah, I think we might get sort of 900 odd, I think, if Worthing bring quite a few. I think, yeah, as I say, it's going to be a test. I think there's still a lot of people away from holiday. The amount of people I've been speaking to that are still on holiday is unbelievable. But yeah, it's going to be a test and it's going to be interesting. Um, but if the Saints win, that might actually draw a few people up for the next home game. So hopefully the players can do the job. Well, people are on holiday. That's why we're doing it in the middle of the afternoon because you've got yet another day off, haven't you, Jake? Oh, when aren't I? Um, on a day off, Dave. Come on, it's easy this uh, this lark. <laughs> and talking to you, Dave. Where's your job? Unemployable. Wow. <laughs> Putting the boot in nice and early there, buddy. Are we? <laughs> yeah. Good lord. I'll try and get over it, Lee. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Looks as though you already have tabs. <laughs> oh, on that very on that pos- note, <laughs> positivity filled <laughs> note. <laughs> Good. Oh, I suppose we better. Right, we go for it all over again next week, and uh, we'll see you on Saturday down at Clemens Park. Thank you very much, everyone. Take care. Bye bye.